ladies and gentlemen, the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas. From sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston, and New York to LA, where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say. some crowd. Wow. This is a big crowd. Well, thank you very much. This is a great crowd. We have a lot of great crowds. There's something happening. You're going to see that on the 3rd, although uh, the Supreme Court would probably like to delay it for a long time, it looks like. But we're going to have a tremendous victory. It's going to be a victory like none other. It's the most important election of our lives. Hello, Michigan. How are you doing, Michigan? How are you doing? It's cold, but I feel very warm in this group. This is a great group. Four days from now, we are going to win this state. And we are going on to win four more great years in the White House. We're going to have it. We're going to have it. Unless there's something that we don't see. You know, I'm watching these Biden rallies. It's like, there's nobody. <laughs> of course, he says that they want to do it that way on purpose. You know, no, the problem is nobody shows up. <laughs> they were putting on the screen our rally. That's you. You're all famous, very famous. And his rally, there was nobody. At least he's doing a rally. He got out of the basement, so that's good. Cool. With your support, we will continue to bring back your jobs, cut your taxes, cut your regulations. Support our great police. Support our military, defend our borders, protect the Second Amendment, which is under siege. Protect always religious liberty and ensure more products are proudly stamped with the wonderful phrase, you know what it is? Made in the USA, and that's happening more and more. Thanks to our historic campaign to slash red tape and mobilize industry, we will deliver a safe vaccine to the American people in just a number of weeks, a couple of weeks. It's happening very fast. Great companies, the greatest companies of their kind in the world. And we got plenty of them there, too. 
Seniors will be first. We make seniors first, right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. They say, will you be the first one to take it? You know, it's a no-win situation. If I say yes, they'll say, he demanded to be first. If I say no, they'll say, he had no courage. <laughs> now, we're going to take care of our seniors first. We're going to take care of our doctors and frontline workers, everybody. But it's uh, really, and by the way, you know, without it, we're still rounding the corner. We have it. But without it, we round the corner. And it will be available free. We're doing the vaccine free. And the reason is that this wasn't your fault. This wasn't anyone's fault. This was China's fault. Just remember it. Our vaccine will eradicate the virus much more quickly and end the pandemic quickly, 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 because we want to have our life restored just to normal. That's all we want. That's all we want, normal. <laughs> We just want normal, bring us back seven months. That's what we want, right? And that's what the whole world wants. Look what's happening in Europe. It's terrible. It's terrible. What China has done to this world. And just remember it. Just remember it. And next year will be the greatest economic year in the history of our country. You see what's happening. 33.1%. Nobody can blame it. They can't believe it. They don't like talking about it. You know, they don't like talking about it. Do you have a new thing going? It's called... We love you. <laughs> Thank you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you. We love you. You hear that, Ben Carson? You hear that, Ben? I'll tell you. Nobody's ever heard that before politically. Maybe for Ben Carson. I don't know. Maybe. I love Ben Carson. Thank you, Ben and Candy. Thank you. Thank you, Candy. Joe Biden is promising a long, dark, painful winter. Did you see him at the debate? Did anybody see the debate by any chance? No, he said a uh, long, dark winter. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. That's just what our country needs is a long, dark winter and a leader that talks about it. You know? I didn't have the privilege of going to my basement in the White House. I didn't have the privilege of going to a beautiful room on the second or third floor and staying there for a year and a half because I'm President of the United States. So I didn't have that. I had to do my job. And I said, you know, I could catch this thing, and if I do, I do, and I'm going to get better fast. I didn't know I was going to get better that fast. That was pretty good. I was like in and out, and you know, I had a dose. I wasn't feeling great, but I got better. And it used to be they'd say, you have lifetime immunity, right? You're, it's immu you're immune. Now it's different. Because it's me, they say, I'm good for four months, okay? <laughs> they brought it down from lifetime to four months, but that's okay, I'll take it. But you know what? You have to do your job. You have to get back. You have to open up your states, right? You have to open up your states. <laughs> Gotta get. We got to get our governor to open up our state here, don't we? You know? Oh, don't worry. On November 4th, they'll announce all these states, all these Democrat run states will be open. Not me. Not me. Not me, see? They blame me every time that happens. Every time I mention her name, Crooked Hillary's name, Joe Biden's name, frankly. And where's Hunter? Where's Hunter? There's Hunter right there. He's out by the truck. He's looking to make a couple of bucks, Hunter. Hunter's done. Hunter's done very well for an unemployed person, right, for years. For years, unemployed, and then he, uh, he hit pay dirt. His father became vice president. And Joe hit pay dirt, too. That's part of the problem. I'm delivering the great American comeback. That's what we're doing. We built, we built the greatest economy in the history of the world. Best unemployment numbers, best everything. We had 160 million people employed. We were never even close to that number. And then one day, we saved 2 million lives. We had to close it up. How about that decision? We had to, no, how horrible to have to make it. We understood the disease. We learned the disease. We have to protect our seniors, especially if they have problems with the heart or diabetes. We opened it up, and now we're at a level. I used to talk about the V. This is a super V. 
This is the biggest number, 33.1, and the news doesn't want to talk about it because it's positive. They only want to talk about negative when it comes to us. But 33.1, the biggest number in our country's history by, like, double, but it's more, much more than double. And you'd have to go back to 1952 to get anywhere close. But close, you know what close is? About a 17-point spread. This election is a matter of economic survival for Michigan because Joe Biden, look at what they did during their eight years. And, you know, I said during the debate, 91 to 9, 91. You know what that means? That was a poll. How did Trump do in the debate? 91 percent for Trump. Nine. Nine sisters. Look at these beautiful sisters, huh? They like. They like Trump, but I like them. They even have a Trump flag. Look at that Trump flag. That's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And you know, we're working very hard with little sisters of the poor, right? You know about that. Your friends. That's great. That's great. It's great to have you. Thank you very much. Joe Biden is going to lock down your state, wipe out your factories, ship out your jobs, bring things to China, whatever they can. Punish your family with a trillion, think of this, a trillion dollars times four, four trillion dollar tax hike. We gave you the biggest tax reduction in the history of our country. That's the good news. The bad news is he wants to give you the biggest tax hike in the history of our country. He wants to eliminate private health care. We have 180 million people have private health care. They've fought for it all their lives. They have great, great health care. He wants to, he wants to end it, and it's not going to happen. We're not going to let it happen. And send your state into a very deep recession. Not, but see, I think it's worse. I think it's depression. I just hate to use the D word. Let me just tell you something. How good have I done in bringing car companies here to Michigan? You went 42 years without a car plant. You were losing all your plants. Twelve years ago, I was named Man of the Year of Michigan. Can you believe it? Long before I thought about it. And I got up and I made a speech. I said, you're losing all your car business. Somebody gave me a list. You lost 32% of your car business to Mexico and other places. And now we're bringing it all back. You have many, many factories now under construction, expansions of existing. You haven't had that ever. And then Biden. And remember this. I only ran because of Biden and Obama. If they did a good job, I wouldn't have run. And I guess I wouldn't have won either, but I wouldn't have run. They did a lousy job. I watch them now. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Why the hell didn't he do it? Why didn't he do it? Sleepy Joe. And that was when he was a little bit, a uh, little bit better, a little bit more awake. He's going to do what he hasn't done in 47 years. I'm going to do it. That was so easy, that debate, because it hit me. I, I am going to do this. And I just kept saying, Joe, why didn't you do it, you know? And it was three and a half years ago. It wasn't like a long time. It was three and a half years ago. Biden has vowed to abolish the entire U.S. energy industry, right? No fracking. Guy went for a year and a half. No fracking, no fracking, no fracking. Then he goes to Pennsylvania. Of course we're going to frack. And the, and the press, the fake news, never asks him about it. No energy. And you're going to have gas prices. This is not great for selling your beautiful cars. Gas prices of $6 and $7. Right now, it's nice to be under $2, isn't it? You never thought you'd see that. You never thought you'd see that. Biden's running made America's most liberal senator. She makes, she makes Bernie look like a conservative. Crazy Bernie is like a conservative compared to her. She even Kamala. You have to pronounce it exactly right, otherwise she gets very upset, even though she can't pronounce it right. You saw that the other day. I think that was actually, that was on the great Laura Ingram show. Actually, I watched that. And I do believe Laura Ingram is here someplace. Where is Laura? Where is she? <laughs> Where is Laura? I can't recognize you. Is that a mask? No way. Are you wearing a mask? I've never seen her in a mask. Look at you. Oh, she's being very politically correct. Whoa. Whoa, I've never seen. Laura Ingram, she's fantastic. Thank you, Laura. 
Ah, yes, I've never seen that before. But even sponsored the ruinous Green New Deal. How about that? Knowing nothing about the environment. It'll cost $100 trillion. You know what $100 trillion? Let me put it this way. You can take all the countries in the world that can't afford it. While I'm president, America will proudly remain energy independent. You know, we're independent now. We don't need to be going all over the world. We don't need to be going all over the world. Biden will eradicate the economy. I will eradicate the virus and make the economy better than it's ever been. That's where we were. Now we're doing it again. And let's face it, he's shot. Do you agree with that? I can say. I'm not a fan of his, never was. He was never known as the smart one in the Senate. He was a touchy-feely guy, little personality. He had a good personality. Now the personality's gone and a lot of other things are gone. He'll deliver poverty, misery, depression. I will deliver jobs, jobs, jobs. Good ones, too. Yesterday, it was announced at last quarter when our economy, you know, when this was announced, it was a tremendous announcement. The problem with it was that we didn't get the kind of coverage that we should have. So in the history, think of it, in the history of our country, GDP went up to 33.1, right? In the history, and it was hardly mentioned. It's amazing. And a friend of mine, very smart, said to me, oh, they won't talk about it. It's never been done before, right? They won't talk about it because they don't want you to win. Because they're sick and they're corrupt. They don't want you to win. In the last five months, we've created a record 11.4 million jobs, the most jobs in the short period of time ever created. And we also built the greatest economy in history. And now we're doing it again. See all those hats? Make America great again, again. Let's make America great again, again. But if Biden wins, the recovery will end at a long economic nightmare, just like he said on the debate. We're gonna have a dark winter. That was really depressing. It was even depressing, even though he did so badly in the debate, I was depressed because I said, that's such a depressing thing he said. I like the last statement though best, right? Wasn't that the best? We said, that means you don't want oil. Yes, we are going to get off oil. I said, this is like, I felt like Perry Mason. You know, it's always that last question. It's always the last question. And I go, yes, I'm guilty, I'm guilty. And then they end the show and they go to a commercial. I said, this is the biggest thing that happened tonight. And even Kristen Walker, who I thought did a fair job, okay? I really did. I thought she did. I, a lot of people thought she was much tougher than me, but that we expect, okay? But I mean, and she looked at him, she goes, because she's on his side, not his side. She's on a Democrat, radical left side, but she still did a relatively fair job. She said, why did you say that? It's like, why? Like, why the hell did you say that? What the hell is wrong? I'm protecting you all night. And now you end the debate. Can we keep it going for another 20 minutes? No, I didn't want to do that. Joe Biden spent the last 47 years outsourcing your jobs, opening your borders. He wants open borders. You don't have borders. You don't have a country and sacrificing American blood and treasure in endless foreign wars. We're bringing them all back home. Many of them home. Very, very few left. We're bringing them home. Got to fight the military industrial complex. Eisenhower would talk about it all the time. The military industrial complex. They don't like them coming home, but they've been brought home. And Afghanistan, 19 years, I think, is long enough, but we're serving as policemen, right? Got the greatest soldiers in the world. We're serving as policemen. No, they have to have their own policemen. We have our own policemen. They're the greatest people we have, right? The greatest. He's a diehard globalist who cares nothing for the working people. He's never cared for the working people. China, China's been ripping you off for years. Now you know why. He gets paid by China. He repeatedly tried to cut Medicare and Social Security over the years. Biden was a cheerleader for NAFTA, sending your auto jobs all over the place, but in particular to Mexico. Mexico's a big auto monster right now. USMCA, we did such a good job on that one. He voted for China's entry into the World Trade Organization, one of the worst things that ever happened to our country. The best thing that ever happened to China. They were flatlined, and then they joined, and they went like a rocket ship. Thank you very much, Joe. Great job you did, Joe. Gutting your industries, 
to finance China's rise. You see it, all the empty, they still have empty buildings around from your state in particular. Half of all of Michigan auto manufacturing jobs were eliminated. Think of it. You lost 50 percent of your jobs because of these guys. It's him and his group. And then he says, oh, we're going to do this. He'll come and say, oh, yes, we did this. We did. He did nothing. He destroyed your industry. But I brought it back, and you were doing great. And now, amazingly, and I still haven't figured this one, auto production's much higher than it was before the pandemic. Could somebody in the auto business please explain that one to me? Because I'm taking full credit for it. But even I don't get that one. I think you're at 130%. You're at 130%. Look at that sea of people. I hope they can hear me all of them. And housing starts and housing sales. I mean, it's incredible. But the auto, it's like at a number that nobody can believe. You're doing good. In other words, you're all doing good, right? It's a pandemic, and you're doing good. You got to get this governor. You got to get her to open. I am so tired of watching her husband go sailing. He wants to go sailing. He's saying, darling, open up this state. I want to go sailing. But he was doing it before, unfortunately, he got caught. Remember, he got caught. His neighbors turned him in. Can you believe it? At every turn, I don't think she likes me too much. What do you think? Do you think she likes me? I don't think she likes me too much. And, I, and I've done a great job for her. You know what? On COVID, the China virus, I've done a phenomenal job for her. At every turn, Biden twisted the knife into the back of Michigan workers and workers all over the country. In 2016, Michigan voted to fire this corrupt political establishment, and you elected an outsider as president who is finally putting America first. If that's okay. Is that okay? <laughs> and if I don't sound like a typical Washington politician, it's because I'm not a politician. And if I don't always play by the rules of Washington and the Washington establishment, it's because I was elected to fight for you, and I fight harder than any president has ever fought for the great people of this country. And I'm not just running against sleepy Joe Biden. I'm running against the left-wing media, the big tech giants. You see how crooked they are. How crooked are they? They made a mistake, you know, by not putting it here. You have the biggest story there is, right? Corruption by Joe Biden. Forget about the son, by Joe Biden. But the son, the same thing. Look, even if Joe didn't get the 10% or the 50% that he was promised, listen to this. The son walks in. He had nothing, had no experience. He gets a job for 130000 a month, right, on Burisma. And he gets a $3 million, they say a $3 million upfront payment. That sounds reasonable. But would anybody else take that job? A month, and he knew nothing about energy. Other than that, it sounded fine. Then he goes to China, he picks up $1.5 billion. He gets fees on that. That's millions of dollars a year. And then they give him three and a half million from Moscow. The mayor of Moscow's wife gives him three and a half million. You don't even hear about this stuff because they refuse. In fact, they just turned the cameras off. They refuse. No. You see, you can't have a scandal if they don't report it. So the Times and the Washington Post and all of, you know, the fake news CNN, look, they turned the cameras off. I knew that was. No, it's a terrible thing. They turn the damn cameras off when they do that. You know what happened? They go, we're here live. At Joe Biden, you know, he's doing a thing. There's nobody there. I'm looking. They're showing the sea of people, 25,000 people. They're, they're showing it's like a sea. And, and the other one, they're looking, and there's like nobody there. But they've gone to that rally, and Fox has gone to. I don't know what the hell happened to Fox, right? What happened to Fox? Boy, oh, boy. Well, we still have a few great ones at Fox. We still have a few great ones, but it's, it's not like it used to be. Biden is the cast. It's one of the biggest differences between this campaign 
and the campaign from four years ago. We're doing better now than we ever did. There's more enthusiasm. The crowds, the crowds are much bigger. There's more enthusiasm. But Fox is a big difference. Somewhere along the line, we lost Fox, and that's okay. That's all right, but that's a big difference. And the big techs, I'll tell you, the big techs are much worse. You know, when I heard how bad they were, and I heard you can't win without them, they're so powerful, and then we won, I said, why are they powerful? Now they've gone totally nuts, okay? Mark Morgan, one of our top people on the border, we've had a great border, and he was showing how great the wall is. You know, we're almost finished with the wall and how it's working. And he said the success, the, the, you probably heard this, he said the tremendous success that we've had, and all he's doing is, he's not talking as a politician, he's so proud of the job, because people aren't getting into our country, murderers and, and rapists and all the, they're not coming into our country anymore. We're working very closely with Mexico. They have 27,000 troops on the border. And Mark Morgan is explaining how great this wall has been, it's gonna be finished very soon. It's much sooner, than, oh, they're going crazy because they never thought we'd get it built. Right? That's why they don't talk about it anymore. They don't talk about the wall. They used to talk about it. Now they don't talk about it anymore. But Mark is talking about how incredible the border security. And they took down his tweet. And they wanted to close him up. All he's doing is saying, like, we're doing a good job. And he's not a politician. He's saying he's doing a good job. They took down his tweet. And they got the hell knocked out of him. And they put it back up, I understand. But this is really bad. And they don't do that to liberals. They don't do it to liberals. They don't ever do it. They don't touch them. It's very unfair. And a lot of things are happening. Biden is the candidate of anarchists and rioters and looters and gun grabbers, flag burners. We ought to put people in jail for a year when they burn our flag. You know, what the hell is that all about? I see them burning a the flag. They ought to have you burn the American flag, you go to jail for one year. Be amazing. It's like we did, we signed, I signed the law. You knock down a statue or a monument, you go to jail for 10 years. It's amazing how that stopped. It's amazing how that stopped, isn't it? But it's a lobbyist, special interest. I'm the candidate of police officers, the middle class, law abiding, hardworking American patriots, and others. I mean, look, I'm, I think I'm the candidate of everybody I want to know. He, I think you got everybody here. I, I know a couple of rich people. Get them the hell out of here, we don't want them. This election will decide whether we restore the rule of a corrupt political class or whether we declare that in America, we are still governed. We are the people. We govern. We govern. We're the boss. We're the people. My opponent supported the job-killing Trans-Pacific Partnership would have destroyed your automobile business. And I ended it immediately. In fact, Crooked Hillary was in favor of it. And when she heard me speak about it, she immediately turned against it. But she would have done it. He supported the horrendous South Korea trade deal that was supposed to produce 250,000 jobs. And it did for South Korea. It wasn't so good for us. And I renegotiated it. We made it good. We made it good. And we kept the 25% chicken tax. You know about the chicken tax, right? That's on the small trucks, and you're doing well with small trucks. Your best, it's your best product, prof, you know, from a profitability standpoint. And it was a, uh, it would have been a tremendous crushing blow to the auto workers. And I want to thank the auto workers, because despite your leadership, your leadership, your leadership stinks. I'll tell you, all they want is their dues. Pay us dues. They want an increase in dues. They like their life. They like this. But you know, the workers, the auto workers, they support me like crazy. The Teamsters. You know, you have this guy, Hoffa. He calls up, can you help him with a trucking company? Some trucking company, big, beautiful company, great people, many, many thousands of employees. Can you help us with that? And I said, yeah, I can probably do it. I worked it out so the people didn't lose their jobs. It kept the company going. I was very proud of it. I thought it was great. Then I see, he's endorsing sleepy Joe Biden. Biden can't get arrested, okay? He, although, actually, that's turning out to be true. He can't get arrested. We've got to think about that one. He's endorsing Joe Biden. But you know who's endorsing me? You know who likes me? The Teamsters like me and everybody. All of the workers like me. Maybe he won't run. I think he's, uh, I don't think he'd win anyway if he ran. Biden even supported the outrageous fuel economy standards. You know that. That's where every little ounce they suck every, for half a glass of 
gasoline, which we have plenty of right now. We have so much, we don't know what the hell to do with it, right? We had gasoline at one point selling for so little that if you took a barrel of gasoline, they gave you $36 with the barrel. It only lasted for two hours, but I was thinking about leaving government and going into that business. That's how, that's how it is. That's when the pandemic came in and all of a sudden people weren't driving cars, etc. Little things like that. But we have a lot of gasoline. We have a lot of energy. We have great energy. And we believe in all forms of energy. But when they want to turn off our great factories by doing what they're doing, with people like AOC Plus Three telling us how we're supposed to run our country. AOC Plus Three, I don't think she ever went, I don't, I don't, she went to a college, right? Did she ever take an environmental course? All of a sudden, she's saying, no more cars, no more planes, no more flying. I reversed each and every one of those disasters. Now Biden wants to reinstitute. He wants to reinstitute. You know, it took 20, 21 years, many highways and roadways. Simple roadways would take 20 years to get permits. I have it down to two years. It's going to be one year. And they may get rejected for environmental reasons or safety reasons. But now we're building roads. We're doing things that we could never have done before. A vote for Biden is a vote to extinguish, demolish, and wipe out Michigan's auto industry and many of your other industries. Many of your other industries. A vote for me is to keep and create auto jobs and all sorts of jobs in Michigan where they belong. I ended the NAFTA nightmare and replaced it with a brand new USMCA. It just kicked in. It just kicked in. You know how I know it's good? Because Mexico and Canada aren't so happy. They said, couldn't we keep NAFTA? I said, no. They said, well, we want to. We demand it. I said, okay, that's okay. We're going to put a 25% tariff on every car you send in. They said, like I said, wouldn't we like to see the USMCA done? No, I said to them, if you want to keep it, you can, but I'm going to tariff the cars that come into this country. So we made a great deal. We made a deal that's good for Michigan and good for everybody. Just kicked in. Great for the farmers. It'll bring tens of thousands of new jobs to Michigan. It'll bring hundreds of thousands of new jobs to our country. And we won't be ripped off like we were. And it's a big disincentive for a company to go and close up their doors and move to Mexico, move to Canada. Now, if you do that, there's a big price to pay. It's probably the primary reason I ran, if you want to know. A lot of, I ran for a lot of reasons. I ran because the last administration was no good, period. I say it all the time, Joe, I wouldn't have run if it wasn't for you. You guys were so bad, I ran. When GM went bankrupt, Biden and Obama threw the workers at Delphi Corporation. Any Delphi people here? Are you Delphi? Where's Delphi? Oh, I tell you, you, I guarantee you they're voting for Trump, right? Trump. They threw these people under the bus, and days ago I signed an order to restore the pensions and all of the other things for workers, not only Delphi, in Wisconsin, Ohio, and Michigan, who were treated very unfairly, right? Good. I figured if we had none here, I would have just said the hell with it, you know? Let's that's good. All right, you're going to be taken care of. You. They were promised by Obama. They were promised by Biden, actually. But then Biden realized he didn't understand the deal. He wasn't smart. He tried. He tried. Joe tried. He's having a hard time. All right. I'll tell you, you know, I, I see these people and the level of viciousness. You see this character in 60 Minutes screaming. Savannah Guthrie screaming, like screaming. All of them screaming. And then I see Sleepy Joe walk out. What flavor ice cream is it? He looks down. He actually had a hard time with that question. I said, they don't ask me questions like that. They don't do it. How about when they give him the questions? That's worse. When he reads them off, they give him a question. This is a people I deal with all the time. They're crazy maniacs. I deal with them all the time. They ask me things that are just terrible. And I've been doing this for a long time. They ask me very, very dangerous, horrible questions. And with him, it's like they give him the questions in advance, and he puts it on a teleprompter, just like that. They give him a question, then he goes, uh, could you move that a little closer? I can. <laughs> and when I see that, I said, that means that he has the questions. Not since 
uh, the Hillary Clinton scandal when she got, remember? Who, who now, that wonderful person that did it, Donna Brazile, is now working for Fox. So oh, that was a great hire. That was a great hire. Let's hire Donna Brazile, who got fired by CNN and gets hired by Fox. What's that all about? Do you think there's some changes going on at Fox? I don't think so. Oh, I don't think so. Let's hire the person that cheated with Hillary Clinton. Joe Biden is a corrupt politician. The Biden family is looking more and more like a crime family. And they don't want to, it's called the laptop from hell. The laptop from hell. They took millions of dollars from the Chinese communists while Vice President Biden shipped Michigan jobs to China. How the hell can you have somebody fighting for you against China and he's getting money? Him and his family are getting millions and millions of dollars from China. And yesterday, press reports, I don't know about this, but press reports came out yesterday, said the Biden family is under FBI investigation for a long time for money laundering. For money laundering. If Biden wins China, which, now how do you have it where they're getting millions and millions of dollars from communist China, and then he's going to be your president, and he's going to make a deal like I do? I've taken... What I've done, nobody has done what I've done, including to your steel, where they were dumping steel and I charged them a tariff of 25%, and our steel companies came back. And the 25% was just the beginning. But our steel companies come back. I mean, they all came back. When we win, Michigan wins. When we win, America wins. And that's what I want. That's all I want. That's all I want. I had a very good life before this. People think this is easy. You make a telephone call, and these really dishonest people, they impeach you on a perfect call. How are you doing? Congratulations on your winner, man. I never even spoke to him. I'd like to congratulate you on your win. He just became the president of Ukraine. Let's impeach him for that. These people are sick. But you know, the Republicans stuck together. 197 to nothing in Congress. And 52 and a half. 52 and a half to a half. Does anybody know who the half was? Yeah. Biden didn't know, remember? He said, the man uh, from uh, Utah, what's his name? I... He didn't know. He didn't know. He forgot the name of the man. He's only worked with him for about 35 years. Something going on up there. He won't be there long. He's not going to be there at all, because our country will be destroyed. Honestly, we can't play games. We can't play games. You can't put, you know. We have the potential. We have more potential as a country than we've ever had. We can't have a guy like this in there. The guy doesn't have a clue. He doesn't. And they'll say things that are unbelievable. He'll say things about me. They do an ad about me that is so false, and you can't do a thing about it. And we put him a notice. We said it was false. It was all false. We put him a very strong legal notice. They keep it going. You know, they figure, what the hell? The thing's over within five days. Why should we change it? These are bad. I'm telling you, those are bad people. That's why I say, I'm just going to tell you the truth. I'll tell you the truth. But here's the difference is, this is the truth. He's shot, OK? He's shot. Just like, and it's not because of his age, because it's 78 or whatever it is. I know a lot of people that are 85. I know a person, 92. Bernie Marcus, 92, Home Depot. He's like, perfect. I think he, in fact, I told him, I think he's sharper now than he was 25 years ago, if you want to. No, it's not the age. You know, they say age. It's not the age. A lot of people in their 80s, even their 90s, they shot. This guy is mentally shot. One of the biggest issues for Michigan, other than that, let's keep it going, is this election is, uh, and you know what, one of you very big is the whole refugee situation, right? I know it's a big deal here. To protect our national security earlier this week, I suspended the entry of refugees from foreign nations comprised by, compromised by terrorism. So you saw what's going on in France, right? You saw that? And they had another big attack last night, a really bad one. We are keeping, if it's okay with you, if it's okay with the people of, the great people of Michigan, you got to give me approval. We are keeping radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country. I remember I was in the campaign, and I'm running against this guy named Ben Carson, and he was tough. 
He was tough. No, he was. He was tough. And he made a statement somewhat similar to that. And everybody said, oh, he's going to have to leave the campaign. I said, no, he's not. His poll numbers just went way up, I'll bet. Next day, what did they go up? Been like seven, eight, nine points. I said, see? Then I had to start really worrying about this guy. He went up. Everyone said, you had to leave, right, Candy? We, he has to leave the campaign. I said, no, no, it's actually going to be good for him. We don't want to be used. We don't want to be taken advantage of. And I got past, I got past a ban. It's a ban on people coming in from certain countries that are horrible countries where they hate us and the people hate us, right? You know, and one of the reasons we're going to go, I'm going there later. We have a governor and an attorney general. We have 25,000 people want to go in Minnesota, right? One of the reasons we're going to win, and they want us to have 250 people. That's a slight, you know, slight difference. We have 25,000 people, but they have a rule. You can't have more than 250 people for a political event. So they're scamming us. So you know what? That maybe will give us the final victory. We haven't won Minnesota since 1972, okay? 19, that's a long time, which would tell you the odds. You know, that's not good odds. But we're very popular because I helped with that disaster in Minneapolis. Like, we got, we got the guys in there, and they — what did it take? About uh, 25 minutes, it was over. They should have called a long time before. They went through two weeks of hell, and that's what we do. The federal government is always prepared to come in. If you had problems, the federal government is always prepared to come in. We will extinguish those problems very, very quickly. But when you look — and we're always — and we'll always come in. And some people say it's not politically correct to say that. Yeah, it's politically correct. I thought it was a beautiful sight. They lined up. This is after a week and a half of terror. Remember, you had that idiot anchor from CNN stand. This has been a friendly protest. And over his shoulder, it looked like Berlin in its worst day during the war. The worst day they ever had. But no, they told us we can only have 250 people, so they thought I'd cancel. Oh, this is really great. Trump will cancel. No, I'm going to go, and I'll have 250. That's like the first row. I'll have 250 people, and they'll have a lot of people outside, but I don't want them to stand outside. It's colder there than it is now. But it's very cold and very horrible because the President of the United States is going to Minnesota to talk to people, and they're suppressing it. And they think that's good, but I don't. That shows weak leadership by the governor and very unfair leadership by the attorney general. One thing I'll say about that attorney general, I have to say this. He was like the first one, he and a couple of people, he was sitting down being interviewed by George Stephanopoulos or somebody. And he said, no, but he was, and he was like a vice chairman of the Democrat Party, and you know who I'm talking about. And he said, Trump is going to win. This was like right after I came down the escalator with our future first lady, right? That beautiful trip. The beautiful. No. And he said, Trump is going to win. No, no, no. You, you're kidding. Why? Why? No, no. Trump is going to win. So I realized then he's a very smart person. Okay. He turned out, he turned out to be right about that one, didn't he, Nigel? The great Nigel. We're working to help. The Chaldean Christian community also, by the way. We're working to help them. We're working to help them. They've been, they've been, are you Chaldean? Oh, wow. Good. Oh, good. All right, no, we're working to help. We're going to help. We're going to help. You know, you've only been working on it for 25 years. Just like I did with Israel and so many other things. These guys, they talk, talk, talk. Nothing ever gets done. Chaldean American. What are you, what are you going to show me there? What are you, you opened your jacket. Look at this. Oh. Now I like the Chaldeans even more. Oh, that's good. No, they have great, you know what? They have great support. They have great support. They have great support. Good. Thank you very much. They do have great support. Bi hey, look, it's, it's a wildlife. Biden has pledged a staggering 700. This is with Bernie Sanders and the manifesto, we call it. You know, that's the deal with Bernie, crazy Bernie. And I mean, he lost twice now. Guy's the greatest loser I've ever seen. 
No, he loses. He doesn't even complain about it. Just goes back into Congress. He votes. He votes. Holds up his hand. Radical. Anything radical left. A guy. I've never seen a guy like that. He get treated very badly by the Democrats with Hillary. Then he runs again. Is Bernie Sanders going to run again in four years? Does anybody? I don't know. He's all right. I'll tell you one thing. He fights like hell, right? Oh, he would have been. Who would have been easier, him or Sleepy Joe? I don't know. No, he has a smaller base, but they have energy. Joe has a bigger base, but there is zero energy, right? Now we have a really big base, and we have more energy than anybody. Right? <laughs> a 700 percent increase in refugees from the most dangerous terror spots anywhere in the world, including Syria, Somalia, where Omar, Omar, that's the other reason I'm going to win. Omar. Ilhan, Ilhan Omar, she loves our country very much. And Yemen, right? Now I'm going to help, she's going to help me win. She's going to protest when I go up there, and I'll say thank you very much. Every time you protest, it's got to add about 25 percent of the vote. The Biden plan, she's telling us how to run our country. And she doesn't love our country, that I can tell you. The Biden plan will turn Michigan into a refugee camp. If you look at what they want to do, a seven — this is agreed to with Bernie Sanders and that group — a 700 percent increase. A lot of you people are saying, no, thank you. He has also vowed to terminate our national security travel bans, allowing unlimited migration from deadly war zones and terrorist havens. You're all sitting here saying, you know, I think I'm changing my vote. I think we'll go with Trump. <laughs> that I even have to do this. You know, I, I will say this, and, and it's terrible, but, you know, before this COVID, there's about 24 names, right? I could China plague, China virus. But we have about 24. Let's just call it the China virus. Before the China virus came, we were going to have the easiest campaign in history. I was up so much. Now I got to work, right? I have to work. And that's okay. Actually, I think people respect it even more. They respect it even more. No, but it has. It's affected, you know, it's affected policy, you know, politics and leadership all over the world. I mean, people that were very popular all over, because it's a pale. But we've handled it well. Our people have done an incredible job. Our generals, I mean, look at the vaccines. Look at, hey, excuse me, look at me. I go in. Sister, I wasn't feeling too good. And they gave me something called Regeneron. The next morning, sister, I woke up, and it was like God touched my shoulder. Right? I said, Mom, let me at him. I said, give me a trade deal for Michigan. I want to go and renegotiate a trade deal. No, we, what they've done is incredible. In a short period of time, six months, I mean, they never even heard of this drug. And now Eli Lilly's also doing something similar. We have things coming out that are amazing. And even the Times wrote today, people are getting better. People are getting better because of what's happening. And for the Times to write that, that's a very, very hard thing for them to write. You would have thought they would have waited a few days, actually. Let's wait. Let's put out that story on the 4th of November. And you know that everything's COVID, COVID, COVID. You know that. You turn in the news, COVID, 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 COVID. And, uh, you know, cases are up. Why are cases up? Because we test more than anybody in history. I mean, we test. We have tests on top of tests. We'd like another test. We got 19 different versions. And we test much more than India. They have 1.5 billion people. And many countries don't test at all. Many countries don't test at all. But we test more. But deaths are way down. And where people are getting better. But I'm an example of it. My wife is an example of it. First lady. And Baron Trump, young, you know, very young, 14. He's my very tall 14-year-old boy. He's tall. He's, he's a tall guy, but he's a strong guy. And, you know, he tested positive. The doctor said, sir, Baron has tested positive. The doctor's here, Sean, great doctor, he said, he's tested positive. I said, positive for what? He said, COVID. I said, oh, that's terrible. He said, no, he'll be okay. Like 15 minutes later, how's Barron doing, Doc? Oh, it's okay. He's fine now. <laughs> no, they have strong immune system. Now they'll say, he exaggerated the time. Oh, they're so sick. <laughs> they're so sick. You know what I said? You know, I got myself into trouble with that also. Great gentleman from England. 
I said that refugees are coming in and they're promising more than they give our citizens. They said, we're going to give you health care. We're going to give you a free education. And every refugee that comes in will get a free Rolls Royce. And CNN went crazy. They said, President Trump lied. They're not getting a Rolls Royce. You know? True. They took it very seriously. You can't be sarcastic. You can't have a little bit of fun. Because if you do, you look very bad. No, they said, uh, it's not true about the Rolls Royce, but. At, at 800,000 800, a pop, I would say, probably not. No, they took it, CNN took that very seriously. Joe Biden's plan will delay the vaccine, postpone therapies, crash the economy, and shut down our entire country. Under the Biden lockdown, countless Americans will die from suicide, drug overdose, deferred medical care. So many things happen, abuse. I mean, what's happening? There will be no school. No graduations, no weddings, no Thanksgivings, no Christmas, no Fourth of July. There'll be no nothing. There'll be no future. Other than that, it's quite a good plan, I think. <laughs> Biden doesn't have a clue. Look, the cure cannot be worse than the problem itself. Always remember. That. Biden wants to keep everyone locked up, even young Americans who are at extremely low risk from the virus. He wants to steal the dreams and the futures of our youngest citizens. And you know, when a child loses a year of his life because he's locked in, and one thing we have found, you know, there are a lot of telehealth has been great and a lot of the, but when you're looking at a laptop, it's not nearly as good as sitting in a classroom. That has been, that has been determined. It's not good. It's not the same. And we're keeping these kids away from school, and that's something. I mean, it's great in some instances, and telehealth is one of them. But when it comes to school, we've learned very strongly it's not the same, which is why I'm going to win. We're going to win with a record number. I think there's a vote out there that is incredible. Let me ask you a question. Who has voted by ballot or the Who has voted so far? Okay. Who is going to vote on Tuesday? Yeah. It's a funny thing. You know, we tell our people, go out and vote. We're not big into the ballot world. We sort of don't like it, okay? You know, because too many tricks get played. Like, they find ballot, Trump ballots in a waste paper basket. They find them in dumpsters. They found some in the river. It was that no, lovely. Look, all those ballots. Oh, they happen to be Trump ballots. No, they're finding them all over the place. 500 incorrect applications go, get sent to Virginia. The beauty was they sent many ballots to a certain state. They were only defective in one way. They didn't have the name Trump on it. In other words, if you wanted to vote for Trump, what do you do? I guess you're supposed to write it out. Then they'll say, you can't do that. <laughs> no, nah, it's a crooked deal. It's a crooked deal. It's a very sad thing. We like going to vote. And the other thing, funny, they don't want to vote. I could say go to vote on Saturday or on Sunday or Monday. They really want to vote on Election Day. No, I like it. And we are going to have a red wave, the likes of which has never been seen. I mean, I really mean. And let me give the Democrats the bad news. Their vote is under what they thought they needed. Thank you. But their votes are under. You know, they're not performing like they should. They'll probably drop some of the ballots and sign them real quick. I could just see the governor of Nevada. I'm sure he'd never do this, but get me some ballots. We're losing here. Being, because, you know, they don't want to have any signature verification in Nevada. They don't want, the governor, he was a political guy. He ran the political club. So, you know, he's a beauty. So they don't want to have any verification of a signature. So if they lose it, they'll say, get me some ballots real quick. I'll sign them myself. No. I went to vote. I voted. And I went into a place in Palm Beach, and I said, boy, this is so The woman said, sir, may I please see your identification? I said, sure. But I wanted that. You know, I mean, I, I wanted. So I took out a passport. Sir, do you have any other form of identification? I said, are you serious? I said, no, but I, I did. I gave her something else. And I sat, and I filled out the form. I mean, it was, there was no way you could cheat. 
There was no way. I mean, it was really good. It was really professional. And other people, they come in. It was so nice. And we should have voter ID, by the way. Voter ID. The whole country. And thanks to our relentless efforts, only 3% of ER visits nationwide, right, are related to the virus. So 3% of hospital rooms, emergency rooms, 3% are related right now, exactly. Just came out last night. 3% to the virus. Uh, a lot of people, you know, you read about cases, but now they're young people, they're college students, they're younger than college students. But they love the word case because cases, cases have gone up. They don't say that it's a, you know, 14-year-old kid or that it's a 20-year-old student or, I mean, you go under 70 and you go under certain ages and it's 99.9%. .9 they just, you know, it's a whole different thing, but they don't like to talk. But I see it's always, cases are up and people go crazy, you know. No, it's, uh, you live with it. And you have, uh, and you know what to do. We understand it now. You got to understand it. But we're making that beautiful turn, and the vaccines are coming. Due to our groundbreaking therapies, the fatality rate is down 85%. Think of that. And our excess mortality rate is 42% lower than Europe. They kept saying, Germany, Germany, Germany. Yeah. First of all, they have different ways of counting. You know, in Germany, if you have a bad heart and you're ready to die, or if you have cancer and you're going to be dying soon and you catch COVID, that happens. We mark it down to COVID. You know, our doctors get more money if somebody dies from COVID. You know that, right? I mean, our doctors are very smart people. So what they do is they say, I'm sorry, but, you know, everybody dies of COVID. But in Germany and other places, if you have a heart attack or if you have cancer, you're terminally ill, you catch COVID, they say you died of cancer. You died of heart attack. With us, when in doubt, Choose COVID. It's true. No, it's true. Now, they'll say, oh, it's terrible what he said. But that's true. It's like $2,000 more. So you get more money. This could only happen to us, where cases are now surging. And despite, if you look at Europe, they're surging despite these draconian lockdowns. They have it locked down, and they're surging. So what happens is you get it, you're going to get it. If you get it, stay away. If you get it, you're going to get better. And then you're going to be immune, and it's a whole thing, and it goes away. But the vaccines will help. But don't take my word for it, because we have a video, and I wanted to just show you a little video. We only do this to people we really like, because this thing costs a lot of money. So we have a very little and very quick video, but it's very descriptive, and it talks a little bit about Sleepy Joe. Okay. The fact is, every time I've uh, called the president, he's quickly gotten on the line. When we asked to get support for that mercy ship in Southern California, he was able to direct that in real time. What the federal government did, working with states, was a phenomenal accomplishment. Uh, we got 2,000 of these vehicle field uh, medical sites uh, that are up almost all operational now in the state uh, because of his support. And those are the facts. Uh, uh, his team has been on it. I know a team when they're on it, and I know a team when they're not on it. His team is on it. They've been responsive late at night, early in the morning. We are working very well with FEMA Region 2 and with the Army Corps of Engineers, building four field hospitals. Uh, that was a decision the president himself took, and I'm grateful for it. These were just extraordinary efforts and acts of mobilization. And uh, the federal government stepped up. Uh, we needed help, and they were there. He said everything uh, that I could have hoped for. Uh, and we had a very long conversation. Uh, and every single thing he said, they followed through on. We've got to have double the number of ventilators that we requested for that area of the state. And in fact, uh, we got them in, frankly, short order. Have we lost anyone because we didn't have a bed, or we didn't have a ventilator, or we didn't have Healthcare staff? No. The president was extending support for new swabs. So uh, conversation, commitment, uh, promise made, promise kept. My problem is I voted for NAFTA. I'm supporting NAFTA because I think it is a positive thing to do. And I do not pretend to be an expert on uh, international trade matters. Trade agreements like NAFTA and permanent normal trade relations with China, which forced American workers to compete against people who are making pennies 
an hour has resulted in the loss of 160,000 jobs. The president is absolutely right when he says that China has been cheating for 25 years and that Bill Clinton didn't, didn't do enough about it, George W. Bush didn't do enough about it, Barack Obama didn't do enough about it. The rising China is an incredibly positive development for not only China, but the United States and the rest of the world. The rising China is a positive, positive development. It is in our self-interest that China continue to prosper. We want to see China rise. China is a great nation, and we should hope for the continued expansion. China is not our enemy. We talk about China as our competitor. We should be helping. The idea that China is going to eat our lunch is bizarre. The idea that they are our competition, they're going to beat us, is bizarre. They're not bad folks, folks. China is not a problem. Allowing China into the World Trade Organization, which he supported. Extending most favored nation status to China, which he supported. The, those steps allowed China to take advantage of the United States by using our own open trade deals against us. No, Do well, you think in retrospect that you were naive about China? No. But doesn't he deserve some credit for that? It's better. The USMCA is better than NAFTA. It is better than NAFTA. Now, to be fair, maybe Biden's not telling us because he's forgotten his own plans. Watch Biden's staff quickly swoop in to shuffle him along during a quickie escape the basement trip to Pennsylvania. Here's the deal. One of the things that, that, that is important is that um, keep in mind, although they're going to vote on uh, uh, Barrett, I think that, today. That, line, that was terrifying. What kind of country are we going to be? Four more years of George, uh, George, uh, he uh, is going to find ourselves in a position where if uh, Trump gets elected, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be in a different world. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But that says it all. That's easier than talking for a half hour. It says it all. Has no clue where he is. We're joined by some incredible people and warriors. Ben Carson and his incredible wife, Candy. Candy Carson, thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. Great job he does. What a great man. Congressional candidates, I hear he's hot. I hear he's doing great. Paul Young. Paul? That's great, Paul. I hear it's going good. You're winning, huh? I'm hearing good things. You're going to win. And Eric Izaki. Eric. Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much. Good, good luck, Eric. Heard you're doing really — we need these two guys. Please vote for them. And Michigan GOP Chair, Laura Cox. Thank you. Are we winning, Laura? I see we're up. We're just up in the poll by three points. Good. So carry it in. I mean, three points. How the hell do you beat this guy by three points? Is that a win? I don't know. Hey, if it's one vote, we'll take it, right? We got to win. We got to win. Michigan is very important. Michigan, it's very important for Michigan that we win. For 47 years, Joe Biden betrayed the African-American community. Biden devastated black families with his disastrous 1994 crime bill. That came up very much in the debate. He called young black men super predators, and he did it all the time. I gave former prisoners a second chance by signing our landmark criminal justice reform that Biden couldn't do and Obama couldn't do. Joe Biden flooded black neighborhoods with illegal foreign labor. And I'm providing black neighborhoods with billions of dollars in thanks with our Opportunity Zones, which have turned out to be incredible. Tim Scott, Opportunity Zones have been incredible, what they've done for communities and for Hispanic, black workers. 
Under our platinum plan, we'll create 3 million new jobs for black Americans, restore safety to every neighborhood, and we'll deliver school choice to every parent in America. Right? Good. And in conclusion, I just want to say it's been an honor to be with you. This is incredible. It's cold out here. It's cold. I'd say it's a little cold. But over the years and over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world, and we will end the reliance on China once and for all that's already started. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. We will end the big tech monopoly and restore freedom of speech. We will defend religious liberty, the right to life, and the right to keep and bear arms. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might, and we will ensure peace through strength. We will end surprise medical billing, require price transparency, lower drug prices even more. We have done something nobody's done. 52 years last year, drug prices went down, but now they're going to go down at a very high rate because we're doing favored nations. The drug companies don't like me too much, I will tell you. We will protect Social Security and Medicare, and we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. America will land the first woman on the moon, and the United States will be the first nation to land an astronaut on Mars. We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our schools. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, In God We Trust. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the great people of Michigan. See, now, a lot of times, Biden would say, standing up for the great people of um, where, uh, Ohio, Ohio. No, it's Michigan. No. That's happened seven times. Can't do that. You can't let that happen. You can't let that happen. We did not come this far and fight this hard only to surrender our country back to the Washington swamp. So get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, and get out to vote. Get out to vote. Got to do it. Got a big day, Tuesday. Don't even do it on Monday. My people said, oh, let them go Monday, Sunday. Don't worry about it. Just do it like you like to do it. Just do it. Tuesday's good. On November 3rd, we must finish the job and drain the swamp once and for all. Nobody ever said it was going to be that deep. Nobody ever said it was going to be that deep and that vicious, but we're knocking the hell out of them. They don't know what the hell is going on, they say. It's been tough for them, too. They never had a thing like this. From Midland to Mackinac, from Lansing to Grand Rapids, and from Battle Creek to right here in Waterford Township. Nice. We inherit the legacy of Michigan patriots who gave their blood, sweat, and tears for this beloved nation. This is the state where Henry Ford invented the assembly line. Think of that. It's the place where General Motors, Chrysler, and Kellogg revolutionized entire industries. What a state. Michigan gave us Motown, the Mustang, and the unrivaled might of the American Midwest. We made America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world, and the best is yet to come. <laughs> Proud citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. That's what I said I was going to do. With your help, your devotion, your drive, we are going to keep on working, we are going to keep on fighting, and we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning.
We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Michigan, we have made America powerful again. We have made America wealthy again. We have made America strong again. We have made America proud again. We have made America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Michigan. Go out and vote. Thank you.